Yeah, I think we're live. Yeah, we're live. Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Malvika Rajkumar. Uh, joining me today, I have Shanotra Kumar. We are going to talk about uh, the topic of hate speech. And uh, this is particularly come into context these days after the uh, raging allegations against Facebook and the politician that was uh, banned very recently in for making hate speeches. So it's important to understand what the law is. Now, hate speech itself is not defined in any law in india at least and but generically the meaning of hate speech in contemporary times has traveled to something mere beyond any kind of offensive speech it now also includes speech which is insulting derogatory discriminatory provocative or even something that incites or encourages someone to use violence so it results in the disturbance of uh, harmony and order in society at large. Now, it's particularly a, a heinous kind of crime because it affects a person not only physically, but psychologically. And uh, to tackle this, in India at least, since hate speech has not been defined under the, any law, there are certain legal provisions that you can keep in mind if you're going ahead and filing an FIR, because these legal prohibitions prohibit select forms of speech, and these kind of, uh, all these crimes put together is how India is looking at hate speech right now. Now, let's say, let's look at some of the legislations around hate speech. Uh, one of the uh, primary legislations you should keep in mind is the Indian Penal Code 1860. Section 124A of IPC defines uh, sedition and it penalizes sedition. Shunutra will explain that uh, later in much detail. Section 153 of the IPC, it punishes any promotion of enmity on the grounds of religion, race, place of birth, residence, language, etc. And 153B also penalizes any uh, uh, prejudicial comments regarding integra national integration. And it's important to know another section, which is 295A, which... Uh, penalizes uh, deliberate and malicious attacks, which are intended to outrage the religious feelings of any class or community. Uh, so for example, saying something to a religious sect, which is offensive to them is uh, something that falls under this section. Now, uh, similarly, there's also section 298, which penalizes something very similar, where if you're saying something to wound the religious feelings of a person, then you can actually go to jail or you may have to face a fine. Uh, 501 and 50, uh, 501, clo sorry, um, section 505, clause 1 and clause 2, penalize the publication and the circulation of any statement, any rumor or report that causes uh, um, uh, a lack of harmony among society or ill will or enmity among certain classes. Apart from this, there are some other legislations. The most important one is the Representation of the People Act. Section 8 disqualifies a person from contesting an election if he is convicted for actually indulging in any acts amount amounting to illegitimate use of freedom of speech and expression. This, along with Section 123, Clause 3A and 125, prohibit uh, the promotion of enmity on the grounds of religion, race, caste, creed, community community language uh, just to win votes. So this is these are very important sections at the time of elections and many politicians have FIRs registered against them for saying things that hurt certain religious groups or other people. Apart from this, there's the Protection of Civil Rights Act. There is the Religious Institutions uh, Prevention of Misuse Act, 1988, Cable Television Network Regulation, 1995, and Cinematograph Act, which is very important. All of them have provisions. For example, when there's a cinema that's aired on uh, in theaters or on an OTT platform, the Board of Film Certification has to prohibit and regulate uh, uh, and make sure that there is no content in the film that prohibits any, uh, that uh, promotes any enmity against any person or any community for that matter. Uh, last but not the least, with the Indian Penal Code, it's important to read the Code of Criminal Procedure 1973. 
This also empowers under Section 95 the government to actually uh, forfeit or seize any publications you have which promote enmity. This is something that's widely explained in our sedition explainer, so you can go there and check. Like, for example, there have been situations where people have been arrested for having uh, communist literature. So all this is actually boiling down to Section 95 of CRPC because that's where the power actually comes from. So uh, now Shunotra will uh, explain some more aspects of hate speech. So uh, basically, the right to uh, freedom of expression that's guaranteed under Article 191A of the Constitution is one of the most important liberties recognized in any democratic setup. Uh, basically, its objective is to allow promotion of all forms of opinion and to have a healthy debate, even if those opinions are not popular ones. And uh, so basically, the premise is that everyone has a platform to speak their mind. And the diversity in opinion is what actually fuels a healthy democracy and allows it to survive. And uh, in the scheme of this liberty, hate speech can be categorized as an expression which is likely to cause uh, distress or offend other individuals on the basis of their association with a particular group or something that incites hostility towards them. Now, uh, the reason you don't have a fixed definition, fixed legal definition for hate speech as Madhika earlier pointed out, is basically to avoid setting a standard for uh, determining unwarranted speech without any context that may actually lead to suppressing a person's liberty. Uh, any assessment on uh, whether, how, or how much hate speech should be prohibited must account for certain uh, contextual variables, like who is involved and where and under what circumstances did this case arise. Now, this is the reason when you look at Article 19, that guarantees uh, the freedom of express speech and expression that I earlier pointed out is, it only lays down reasonable restrictions rather than going into defining what actually hate speech is. So uh, if you look at uh, some of the uh, important uh, decisions by courts, the, the Indian courts that have been taken on determining what amounts to free, uh, free speech and what are uh, the reasonable restrictions or exceptions to it, the Supreme Court in a very famous case, that's uh, Shreya Singhal versus Union of India, had differentiated uh, three forms of speech, uh, discussion, advocacy, and incitement. Now the court held that a speech can only be limited on grounds of exceptions mentioned in Article 19.2 when it reaches a certain threshold of incitement. All other forms of speech, uh, even if like it's offensive or unpopular, they have to be protected under Article 19.1a. Now, incitement is the key to determining the constitutionality of a restriction of uh, any restriction on free speech. Now, while this is a standard that's set in India, some of the countries have actually also laid down much more detailed parameters that go beyond incitement, like uh, the extremity of the speech, uh, status of the author, status of the victims, uh, the context the speech was set in, the potential the speech has, and so on. So uh, this is basically uh, keeping in mind, like, why uh, this is like this is basically why uh, there is no you won't find any exact definition of hate speech not just in Indian law but also across jurisdictions and even in international documents. Now, uh, one more thing that's very important to note uh, while talking about hate speech is that it is very different from uh, sedition. Now, uh, if you remember. Uh, we've actually had one of our uh, Thursday lives talking about sedition before. We explained sedition uh, much more in detail as a crime against the state. Now, uh, when you look at it in this context, uh, as I said, it's a, like this, this is a crime that directly hurts the state and hate speech is something that indirectly hurts the state. Uh, to elaborate this a little, uh, basically say, uh, for a statement to qualify as a sedition under Section 124A of the IPC, it must threaten the sovereignty and integrity of India and also the security of the state. Now, if such a statement is made, it is a direct crime against the state. Now, in hate speech, the statement is not directly made against the state or it aff or affects any of the uh, criteria that are mentioned under sedition. But instead, it's made against a group of persons that leads to incitement and disruption of uh, public tranquility that indirectly affects the state. So this is the main distinction. And as you can see, these two crimes are very different from each other and should not be confused. So Malvika, I'll just walk you over some of the criteria for hate speech. Yeah. 
so uh, again since hate speech is not defined properly in uh, some of the cases that have gone to the supreme court uh, there was a certain refer reference that they made to the law commission asking them to look into uh, the issue on hate speech. And in their report number 267, which is titled Hate Speech, they what they did was they analyzed different judgments and uh, different jurisdictions on what could be criteria for hate speech. And they've listed down a few. Uh, these are really important because uh, courts also uh, take a look at a case depending on certain criteria. Uh, for example, the extremity of the speech is very important as a criteria. So in order to qualify as hate speech, the speech must be offensive and must project an extreme form of emotion is what some of the discussions have uh, held in terms of this point. Now, this means that every offensive statement that you made does not automatically become hate speech. There has to be, like, for example, you giving an unpopular opinion will not be classified as a hate speech. So apart from this, there are some other criteria which are very important, which is incitement. So there was a Shreya Singhal case versus Union of India that went to the Supreme Court long back. And uh, in that, it specifically said that whatever speech or written or verbal um, action is actually taken, it must amount to incitement for it to be restricted. So this is basically an accepted norm to limit speech. So under section 191A, we all have the freedom of speech. And as Sunotra mentioned, the actual restrictions come under 192, which is restrictions on the basis of decency, morality, integrity of India, sovereignty, etc. But apart from that, when courts look at cases, they also look at certain uh, specific criteria, like I mentioned. Uh, another two, the other two criteria which are very important is the status of the author and the status of the victim. Now, when I say status of the author, what happens is ECHR has uh, recognized many, uh, in many judgments, has recognized the position that the author of the speech making the hateful statement or may, uh, saying hate speech, it should be determined, uh, uh, what should be determined is his position. For example, there was an uh, Indian case the Supreme Court looked at in Pravasi Balai Sangadan. In that, what happened was uh, the uh, parties had approached the court to sanction hate speech on a similar ground that the status of the author has to be looked into. For example, if it is uh, a politician making a statement, then there is a certain power to influence society on a large. So the onus on someone with power is actually great in this respect. Another thing you also need to look at is the status of the victims of the speech. For example, if the statement is being made against a politician, for example, uh, where they've actually opened themselves to close public scrutiny of uh, their work or, their, or uh, the kind of things they do for the public, then it is something that needs to be considered because uh, this is important compared to the harm that you can create when you actually give hate speech against a normal person who's not really uh, putting themselves out there to uh, uh, inflict such harm for that matter. Now, apart from this, the potentiality of the speech and the context of the speech is also important because uh, uh, this is something that uh, courts anyway do. They always look at the crime in context to the facts that actually happen. But this is a very important uh, criteria that uh, the Law Commission report has actually mentioned. It's actually a great report to take a look at and uh, it's available on their website. Uh, Thank you so much for uh, joining us today. If you have any more uh, questions or doubts, you can leave them on the Ask Nyaya tab. It's on our website. Otherwise, you can leave them on the comments here. Thank you so much. I hope you had a good session.